Hi guys, welcome back to Trenches of Parenthood. Today's topic is gonna be a little different, but I'm very excited about it. Today's topic is gonna be parenting wisdom from Proverbs. Let's get started. So like I told you in previous episodes, a big goal that I want to do is I want to get stronger with my faith. And I don't think I went into detail with any of this, but I remember I mentioned it at some point in one of my episodes. But I'm not an expert with the Bible. I'm Christian. Um, And all I really want to do is that I want to know about the Bible more. I want to learn how to use it with my children. And I just want to learn as much as possible so I can have my connection with God be stronger. So that's my goal. So today I picked out some verses from Proverbs to help me understand how I should be as a parent. And I'm going off of my own interpretation here. So if there is another interpretation that you find or that you have, I would love to hear that because that's how we learn, right? The more we hear from each other, the more we're giving each other inspiration, ideas, other verses, the more we learn. So that's really my goal, to learn. So let's do that together. Now. So we're going to start off with a very simple verse that I found in Proverbs 22, 6. So the verse says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So this was a verse that I thought, hey, we see this verse everywhere, right? Typically, when our parents teach us something, we carry that along. Whether it's good or bad, we carry it, and then we pass it on to our kids, and so on and so on. The only thing that we typically would do is that if we find like something that we notice, like, oh, this is probably not the best habit to have, we try to change it, and then so we don't pass it on to our kids. However, most of the time, you get your teachings from your parents or whoever raised you, and you pass it on. So I gathered two things from that scenario and I also questioned something so the two things that came to my mind when I read that was so if they teach me to do good I'm going to stay doing good and continue to do that when I'm older but then I had a question I'm like okay well what if it went the other way around what if I was taught to not do good and I would continue to do that until I'm older then what happens however As soon as I did ask that question, I thought about the answer myself. And I was like, okay, so we all have sin. We're human. The only difference is that because Jesus gave his life on the cross, that's why we now can be forgiven for those bad things. So if someone taught me to do bad, and I continue to do that later on, I'm not necessarily a bad person. I have bad habits and I was taught the wrong things. But if I discover that and I put my efforts into becoming better and being good, everything else will get forgiven and you can then now do good. So, I mean, the verse still stands, right? Whatever you learn when you're young, you're gonna keep learning it and you're typically gonna continue with that when you're older. However, If you are taught the wrong thing, you can always recover from it. You can always learn from it. You can always grow from it because you are not your sins. Those are just habits. Those are just acts that you've learned. So you can be better and you will be forgiven for that if you choose to do better. So you still have the opportunity to be good and be close to God no matter which option you fall under. Now, the way I see this connecting as a parent is that I want my kids to do well. I'm going to teach them as much as I know for them to be good in the world. But I also know that I don't have to be perfect because no matter my efforts, because I'm human, I can make I can make a mistake. And I may teach a bad habit or I may teach a bad thing that I'm not even aware of like subconsciously and if that's the case i know that the good that they have in them is enough to bring them 
out of the bad habit that I might have passed on. I also know that if I guide them, and I guide them with the teachings of the Bible, and they have their core values stemming from the Bible, and they are connected to God and Jesus, then everything else will be okay. Because even if I made a mistake, God doesn't make mistakes. So if my son is supposed to become a pastor or become an airplane engineer, it will happen. And my mistakes won't matter. However, the foundation I give my kids is a big determining factor because whatever I implant when they're little, they will carry it on when they're older. So that's what I got out of that verse. And tell me if there's something else that could come from that. But that's, I had so many questions when I read that because I'm like, this is such a simple verse, but it made me go evaluating other aspects because I saw it going to possible ways. We're going to go to another verse that I found in Proverbs, and this is Proverbs 27. By the way, I picked these out from like the easy to read Bible. There's a lot of versions that I get confused on. So I go with the simple English because I think it's basically the same thing. It may say different words, but it's the same message. And that's just my opinion. So I don't remember what translation I got this from, but just so you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's the easy one. So this verse says, the righteous who walks in his integrity Blessed are his children after him. Okay, that verse spoke a lot to me because it is a big goal of mine to learn for myself and be the best version I can be so my children can follow in my steps. And that's kind of what I understood out of that verse. I have to walk in integrity so my kids see how that looks like and they can choose or they can observe or analyze what I'm doing, and then they can do it for themselves. I think of this as a lead by example scenario. If my kids see me doing the right thing, they're going to be inclined to do the right thing as well. So that's a big reason also why I want to become more knowledgeable in the Bible because I wanna make sure I'm teaching the right things, I'm walking the right way, and I'm explaining myself correctly, I'm I want to know that my reactions are getting, are improving based on what I'm learning. There's so many good teachings in the Bible that I want to be able to apply it to myself. And like I said, I'm not an expert, okay? We're, we're, we're learning. So there's just so many things that I think are great and that I want to make sure that I'm applying it to myself because I, I want my kids to see that in me. I want them to find that peace and to find that connection with Jesus a lot easier than it was for me because they've already walked with him for so long. The other verse I came across was Proverbs 20, 11. And it says, even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. So this one was a little tricky. So the basic thing that I got out of this one is that everybody acts their own age, right? Cause it says even a child makes himself known by his acts. So you can see a child based on their acts and you can judge a child based on their acts. But then looking more into it, I broke it down into a few things. So when it was talking about how you can see it on their acts, right? So that's like something you can see externally. So you can judge character based on what you're seeing externally. Because on this one, it says, makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. So you were able to tell that this was a kid because externally you saw that his conduct is pure and upright. So you can see pureness. You can see that externally. So that made me think of like, okay, so you, you can see a good child if you're seeing the things that they're doing same way as you can judge an adult you can judge an adult's character based on what they're doing so that made me think you know how sometimes when let's say uh maybe your kid is acting up and maybe you're in a family event your kid is acting up and someone that loves you comes to you and they tell you hey maybe maybe they shouldn't be doing that and i think uh sometimes we get offended by comments like that which is like, wait, why are you, don't talk about my child, you know? And I think that 
becomes like the first reaction sometimes when we just want to like protect our kid it doesn't come from a bad place but sometimes i don't think we have the best responses um, and i'm saying we because i think i've had bad responses as well so something that this kind of made me realize is that if externally you could judge character if somebody that loves me is saying that my kids are acting out of character or something is wrong it made me think that maybe i should consider analyzing what happened now not saying that they're always going to be right right because sometimes somebody may say something and it's just like well that's a normal behavior for a child and that's okay but i think sometimes when someone that loves you comes to tell you that they're not telling you that from they're not coming from a wrong place they love you they care about you so if my kid did something that is not correct and someone is telling me about it, I have to put my energy into analyzing that act to see, is that something ethically correct? Is that something that they should be doing? Is that how I want my kids to respond every time this type of scenario happens? And I think once you evaluate that, then you start seeing, okay, if it's not something I want him to respond like that, I have to teach him how to respond to scenarios like that. And I have to discipline them. So that's just something that actually I, I found, I think it was eye-opening for me. You know, I think that there have been times in where I, I listen to what other people may tell me, but I don't necessarily take it in, absorb it, and analyze it to see how my response will change as a parent because I have to decide whether this is an area of discipline, like if I have to set boundaries, if I have to explain something, or what what is it? So I think that deep analysis is the part that I got out of that. Because you can externally judge character, I need to discipline. So their conduct reflects their character correctly. While I was thinking about that, I thought about a verse that I actually, I, I hear it all the time, and I love it. And I've, this is my favorite verse, but it talks about what love is in the Bible. So we're going to, this is kind of like a side note, okay, because it, it ties in with what I'm saying here. So this is all about love and is in 1 Corinthians 13. It's from 4 to 8. So the verse says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts always hopes, always perseveres. And the reason why this came to my mind is because if somebody that loves me is telling me this, part of what this says is that love rejoices with the truth. So most likely when someone says that, someone that loves you is telling you that, they're telling you the truth. They're trying to protect you. They trust you can be a good parent. So they're telling you so you can act upon that. And they're probably gonna keep telling you that because love perseveres. So that was the other thing that I, I was kind of keeping in mind. It also depends on who's coming, who's coming to you with this information. Now keep in mind that an outsider, although they may not know you, they can still make a judgment and they may still be truthful based on their character. So this is not to say that an outsider that maybe does not know you cannot give you fruitful advice this is saying that I know that if someone that loves me is telling me something, then I should definitely be looking into it. So that's what I understood out of this and something that really got stuck with me. If there is another way that you guys would take this, please let me know. Again, I am very interested in learning, so the more the better. Now we're going to move on to these two different verses. So it's Proverbs 29.15 and 29.17. The first one says, a rod and a reprimand impart wisdom, but a child left undisciplined disgraces its mother. Going to 17 now. Discipline your children and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delight you desire. With that first verse, the 2915. Now, I think I read that one before in a past podcast because I was talking about discipline. But something that connected with me when I read it this time around, um, let me read that part again. A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom. So a very big connection here. 
So a rod is typically some type of consequence. That's how I take a rod. A consequence and a reprimand. A reprimand is a spoken word. So if I give a consequence and I connect it with my words, meaning I'm explaining what's happening, how you need to act from now on, that's what creates the wisdom. Making sure that we are explaining why something is happening and how it can be corrected while also giving the consequence needed to correct the behavior. So that was something that I really liked. It's something that I've always thought about, but it's, um, it's nice to see it. It made me feel like I'm doing okay. <laughs> but let's keep going with the next part. The next part is that if you discipline your children, they're gonna give you peace. They're gonna bring you the lights that you desire. And that was the other part. Notice how when a kid does not have discipline, it is a lot harder to go day by day because things just get more challenging. And I do realize that when they do have discipline, your days do go smoother. I'm going also off of the teacher aspects. Like I've seen classrooms and where there's no management, there are no consequences. The reprimands are typically not clear and they don't get chances to try again. And I've seen classrooms and where the person is firm, gives a consequence, explains, let them try again. And you can see the difference that it makes in those two classrooms. Kids typically respect the classrooms that have the discipline and they understand where it comes from and they don't, they don't really get mad about that. They love the fact that they have a place where they have a clear understanding of how they have to move versus the other classroom typically there's a lot of frustration there because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing they don't know how to behave they don't know when things would happen they don't know when the discipline will happen it's not consistent and they know that it's just not a safe place so that's the other thing that i noticed too like in a classroom when you have discipline students feel safe being there in the other classroom, they don't feel safe. They typically act out more and they, a lot of the times they don't like the teacher for that reason. So that's just kind of a connection to the classroom, but I think it plays very similar in parenthood. Like if you don't discipline your children, they won't know how to move. They won't know even how to please you. And that could definitely lead to a lot more trouble later on. So it's, it's a really big thing for me to discipline, especially when they're young, because they're absorbing everything, they're learning everything, they're getting to know what pleases mom and dad and what is it that they don't like. If they have a solid foundation, just like everything, as they get older, it's just going to be nice. And they're gonna respect you. They're gonna love you. They know how you move. They know what you like, they know what you don't. And just like that first verse that we read, whatever they learn when they're young, they're gonna keep it forever. So it just kind of backs up that very first verse that we read. You know, the other thing I try to keep in mind when it comes to discipline is that discipline, although sometimes people take that as a harsh thing, that is something that comes from love. If you are disciplining with anger, that's not love. I am actually working on making sure that whenever I discipline my children, I have to be in a good state of mind before I can discipline them correctly. Sometimes that means me stepping away from that moment until I come down and control my own feelings before I can go back and give the consequence and discipline them, tell them how it, how it is, how it should be in the future. Because when you have anger, you're not yourself. And again, the discipline is not coming from love. However, sometimes a consequence that you may give your kids, maybe it'll cause them to cry because they don't want the consequence. But you know that you're doing this for their good. You're doing it from your love and it's so they can become better. So though it may, it may stain a little, it's all from love. And I think that's the that's the one thing we always want to remember. Our actions have to come from the love that we have for our children. 
the, the one example that I thought about when I was younger, and I remember always thinking about this, is the example of like typically, let's say when you go to the doctor and they have to give them shots, you do that because you love them. You make them go through the pain of getting the shot because you don't want them to get really sick later on. So you go through that and you, you stay your ground, you hold their hand and you let them go through the pain. And they may think that you're doing it to hurt them because they have no understanding of this, right? Let's say, and let's say because there's, this is not even real because they're not thinking that you don't care about them. But let's just pretend they feel this pain and they're like, you know, mom, like, why are you doing this? But you know, you're doing it for their good. You're doing it out of love. You're not doing it to hurt them. Unfortunately, they have to go through that tiny bit of pain so they can be healthier later on. My mic died, so this is not going to be as nice quality anymore, but that's okay. The message is the same. But that's to say, sometimes they have to go through a little bit of pain so they can be the much better better version of themselves later on and I think as a parent we have to be strong enough to go through those emotions and we have to learn how to control our own emotions to be able to discipline our children so that's what I got from those verses okay now I'm gonna go back to the verse that's all about love so I'm gonna go back to the Corinthians verse so I'm gonna read you the other part of it so this is 1 Corinthians 13 from 4 to 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. This is a verse that I try to remember every single day. To one, tell me how I should be showing my love. But two, if I ever question how to correct my kids, I always go back to the verse because in my head, their actions should be contributing to love. So whatever they're doing, it has to align with what love is because the the main commandment that God told us to do is to love one another. So if my kid is not doing something correctly and he's not showcasing the values of showing love for someone else, then I have to teach them how to align themselves better and how to improve every time. So this is something that I even I struggle with, right? Because like one of the things that it says is that love is slow to anger. That is very hard to do sometimes. Anger is so hard to control sometimes. And so it's something that we're all working th towards. It's not, we're not perfect on this. My goal is for my kids to learn what love is, how to act appropriately to showcase love. And I think in general, we're all trying to do our best. So I'm gonna push them to do their best, to the best of my abilities. Now we're gonna go to the last verse in Proverbs 27, 20. Seven, <laughs> the righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. And this is the perfect way to end. Like I said, my biggest goal is for me to learn. I want my kids to look up to me and see a woman of God. I want them to look at me and be able to explain what love is to someone else. I want to be the best parent I can be and seek learning as much as possible because I want them to want to learn. I want them to learn with me as I get older and as they get older. I want them to know that I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to do my best every day to be better, to have a stronger connection with Jesus, to be walking with integrity, and I want to show that to my kids and I want them to be able to see that. So no matter what religion you have, seek to continue to learn. Seek to not only tell your children how to act, but also show them. Be their example. I hope that this helps you as some sort of inspiration to learn more. I hope that, I hope that this also shows you that we are all trying. We are all not perfect. And I really hope 
that you continue to learn with me and you teach me some things. In general, it was great to have you guys here with me today. I can't wait to see you on the next one. And just remember, do your best, be your best, pray about it, learn about it, lead the way so your children can follow easily. Thank you guys for being here and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.